Ladies and gentlemen, I have two mystery boxes here in my hands. We're going to open them both up. We are going to compare both of them and we're going to see, well, we're not going to see which one's better. I'm going to tell you in my opinion, which one I think is better. This is Battle of the Boxes, episode one. So my goal with this series, which is really not going to be that much of a series, it's going to be like a few videos, is to get these mystery tackle boxes. Mystery tackle box, lucky tackle box, which is the other one I've got today. I'm sorry if my camera's pretty shaky. I just got it set up on my desk. Uh, but mystery tackle boxes, lucky tackle box, monster bass box, uh, Dark Horse Tackle Box, Sixth Sense Bag, uh, any others that I can find that I can buy a single box of. Uh, I'm going to buy two every month. So I get a Mystery Tackle Box every month. I'm going to buy another one every month, compare it to the Mystery Tackle Box, because I think, in my opinion, Mystery Tackle Box is the standard, right? It, it, in my opinion, it's the standard. So if I can compare these other boxes each month to my mystery tackle box of the month, I feel like I can get a pretty good idea of like, okay, this one's better than that one, right? Uh, so it's not gonna be like a tournament bracket. We're just gonna do like a, every month, I'll get my mystery tackle box and open it up for you guys compared to some other mystery box. This month, it is lucky tackle box. You can't really see it because of the freaking shipping sticker there, but there it says right there. Lucky Tackle Box. So, but we'll start with my mystery tackle box for the month. So open it up, the first thing I see is a jig. Tightrope, uh, baby firework super jig, quarter ounce uh, finesse jig. What's the color on it? Green pumpkin blue. So I've got a couple of these jigs um, in the larger size. So I've got a couple three eighths ounce um, of this jig, but I really like this. Round headed, Finesse jig. I love finesse, finesse jigs. I'm going to do a video pretty soon about my favorite finesse techniques, and I'm going to talk a lot about the finesse jig. So first thing in there is a quarter ounce finesse jig. And I like that it's a quarter ounce because like I said, I've got some finesse jigs that are three eighths ounce, which is fine. It's a good standard weight, but I like having a little bit lighter weight uh, on some of that stuff to use it on, you know, some lighter combos. All right, we have some Sandbar Tackle 3 odd EWG hooks. I always love, these are black nickel hooks, uh, it says. So I always like getting terminal in these mystery boxes because it means I don't have to spend my money. I mean, I'm technically spending my money getting the boxes, uh, but I don't have to go to the store and spend money to buy terminal. I can just stockpile it in these boxes. So I like getting terminal. Uh, and EWG hooks are the type that I use the most, right? For Texas rigs and anything else. So, oh, this is pretty interesting. The Shinobi Shad from, is that Jinko Fishing? I think that's Jinko Fishing. Um, that's pretty, that's a pretty cool little, little bait there. It looks like it's a prop bait or like a spy bait. Yeah, like a miniature spy bait. That's really cool. Uh, the colors are pretty crazy too. Black, some purple chartreuse on the belly. Um, I won't take the time to read the back of it now. I'll do it off camera, but it's, uh, I don't know. That's pretty interesting. I've got a little creek box that I keep of just my micro lures, my small lures, uh, separate from a lot of my other tackle. I'll go straight into that little box, uh, but I'll have to try that out this year. It's pretty cool. See, that's what I like about these mystery boxes. You get stuff that like, I wouldn't pick this up off the shelf probably at a Bass Pro or, you know, if I was at a tackle store, probably wouldn't buy that, you know, pick it up off the shelf, but I got it in a box. It's kind of cool. I'll go out use it, throw it around, see what I can, see what I can catch on it. Ooh, nice. 10,000 fish, Sakoshi bug. Uh, one of my favorite Ned rig plastics. I will probably at some point do a video on the Ned rig, all of my favorite plastics, my favorite terminal, the way I like to rig it, weedless, or not, uh, the combos I like to use it on, all that stuff, I'll probably do some of that in the future. And this is definitely gonna go in that video. Um, I love the Sakoshi bug. What I really like to do 
is take the Sakoshi bug and put it on the back of a finesse jig. Just saying. Uh, and these colors would actually go really well together. So uh, really, really, really big fan of the Sakoshi bug. I love getting those in my mystery tackle boxes. And then some Carl's Amazing Baits. I've gotten these before and I cannot for the life of me remember what this worm is called. And it's it doesn't say it on the packaging, unfortunately. <laughs> There's no sticker. Uh, I cannot for the life of me remember what this worm is called, but it's a like a finesse worm, trick worm in a June bug. Uh, I think I got a pack of these in another box recently that I bought. So um, I like worms. I like finesse fishing. So I like finesse worms really good. Uh, then, of course, you got the Dibble in there, a little magazine with some tips and tricks and things like that. The card with, oops, that's a card with what's inside. Um, and then, if I can get it out of here without pulling it up for everybody, the monthly sticker, which this one is really, co really, really cool. I like that. A license to reel with a little tackle box on it. That's pretty cool. I like that. I like that a lot. So, some trick worms, Ned Rig plastics, or trailer plastics, really unique spy bait, terminal tackle, a couple of hooks, and a finesse jig. Pretty solid, but also pretty standard uh, mystery tackle box. You can kind of expect what you're going to get in a mystery tackle box, I've found. Um, not exactly the same lures every month, that's not what I'm saying. Um, but it does seem like there's a bit of a rotation and like you do get the same types or the same lures, you know, regularly, like those worms I just told you about. So um, not like super uh, surprising, I guess. Um, but there were a couple of cool things in there. I really, really like that. So that's the mystery tackle box for this month. Now let's get into the lucky tackle box and see what we've got in here. I'm really excited about this because... I've, I've never gotten a Lucky Tackle Box before, and I'm pretty excited about it. Oh man, it's like wrapped up like a Christmas present. I gotta unwrap it. I mean, it's put together with a cool like, American flag sticker. All right, first thing I'm seeing is a Wizard Baits size 13. Uh, it doesn't say what type of hook. It looks to me like just a like wacky hook or like a drop shot kind of hook okay if you can see it maybe you can kind of get the gist of it or it'll focus no okay um like a finesse hook like i would use this for a drop shot wacky rig um that kind of deal i really like that that looks like it's really good quality um the only issue i'm seeing is that none of them have holes punched there's no eyelets so there's like nothing to tie it to. So I'll have to figure, I'll have to figure that out. Otherwise, uh, that's really cool. I like those. <coughs> Next thing is a one eighth ounce little jerk bait. It's like a gold and black, uh, what's it called? Rockstar lures, 2.4 inch uh, little jerk bait or minnow crank bait. Again, we will go straight into my little creek box. Um, gold seems to do pretty well here in the Ozarks, uh, for whatever reason. So I might do really, really well in some smaller water. I've got a Renegade Lures. Ooh, this is crazy looking. Oh man, that's like real crazy looking. Uh, it's a popper, but it's got like some crazy graphics and artwork. I don't know if you can see that very well. I guess it's supposed to look like a couple of minnows, maybe. It's, it's like going popping across the water, um, or a few minnows, I guess. I don't know, it's kind of trippy. <coughs> um, but I, I like poppers. I really do like poppers, so um, that'd be pretty cool to, to try out. So renegade lures, uh, like a little school of minnows, I guess, popper. Pretty cool. Uh, another renegade lures. This looks like... Uh, I mean, it's a lipless crankbait or rattle trap or something, but it's like long, like a kind of like a jerk bait or something. Uh, gold again, kind of a real 
bright flashy color really gold with some red uh, black on the top there I'd be interested I, I'm interested to know what this action is going to be like in the water um, if it's got just a tight steady wobble like a regular lipless crankbait or if it, it, it shimmies or darts I, I don't know what this is going to do in the water I'd imagine it works just like a regular lipless crankbait it's just a different shape but we'll have to see um, it's a one ounce lure though so I'll, I'll be honest with you probably not going to get much use for me one ounce lure that's pretty big uh, for what I'm fishing around here anyway we got well oh uh, okay it's stuck it's hooked on the outside of the package there so it's not uh, Wild Baits 3 16 it's a one pack. That's a big package for a one pack. A uh, little jig head there, like a crappie jig head. So um, these are great for the creeks and stuff. Just throw a little grub or something on the back of it. So you can always use more of those. Uh, 3 16 a pretty good all around size. Oh, no, it's not a two pack <laughs> or one pack. It was a one, two, three, four. It was a five pack that the others the other hooks just fell out of. So here are the other four. <laughs> uh, I don't know how on earth they got out of that package, but some of the hooks fell out of this package here. So uh, it was not a one pack, it was a five pack of hooks. Uh, some more wild baits. These are some one eighth ounce, two and 2.8 inch like uh, translucent and chartreuse uh, swim baits. That's pretty, I like the profile of this. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I've been trying to figure out like, I mean, I just put flukes like on the back of uh, bladed jigs or like swim jigs and that kind of thing when I don't want a paddle tail because they're too like big and bulky. If I want to downsize and give more subtle action, I've been going with just like flukes or uh, the Z-Man, like, uh, Shad, the Razor Shad, or whatever. Um, this might be a good option, though, because it's, like, real slim profile. It's a paddle tail, but it looks like it's a small paddle, or small tail, so I bet the action is still pretty subtle, uh, even though it's thumping. So, it might be something to, to throw on the back of, I like throwing a white and chartreuse, uh, chatterbait, so that'd be a pretty good trailer for it, I, I think. Uh, maybe take off that first section, put it on as a trailer, and that might be pretty cool. That's a really good find. And then the last thing we've got in here is HR Bates, the Abler Hog. It is a, what does it say, four inch uh, watermelon candy six pack. Uh, it's like a creature bait that reminds me a lot of the, um, oh, I'm blanking on it right now. It's a Carl's Amazing Baits. Um, but it's like a, I'm not going to try to just sit here and think of it. I can't think of what it, what it's called, um, but it's like a small little creature bait. Lots of good appendages there. Kind of, it reminds me of a lizard, kind of like a tube and a lizard. Um, and I know I'm just blanking on the name of the, <clears throat> the other soft plastics I'm thinking of, but, um, I like throwing this kind of stuff, throwing it on beds, um, flipping it, you know, into some timber and things like that. The tails usually have a good action. You can see it there. It's got like the two long tails and then the two like almost claw-like appendages and then the arms down here with the body. Um, so you can almost fish it like a worm, but it's got like lots more action on it. So um, I like throwing this kind of stuff because I like throwing worms a lot. So, uh, so the creature baits, the swim baits, uh, the crazy looking popper, big lipless crankbait basically uh the little jerk bait the i'm trying to do this without dumping them out or stabbing myself uh the little or dropping them like that uh the jig heads and then these finesse hooks that don't have eyelets uh, don't have loops to hook them on so i'm not gonna lie that was a pretty good box um i think my initial gut reaction is the lures in the mystery tackle box I will probably use more frequently there were like that popper that big lipless uh lipless crankbait 
in the Lucky Tackle Box. Probably, I, I just don't have a whole lot of use for those lures. Um, the swim baits I'll definitely use. The creature baits I'll definitely use. Um, the jig heads I'll use a, a bit. I don't use red a whole lot. I tend to go with white or black or just lead. Um, but a, a red option would be good, um, especially if I'm doing some crappie fishing or something like that. Um, it'd probably be a good option. And what was it? Oh, the little minnow. Um, I'll probably get some use out of that, that, that little minnow. So all in all, you know, I'll use most of the stuff out of this Lucky Tackle Box. It's not like it was a wash and, all right, I'm, that was a waste of $25. I'm not going to use it. Um, I will use most of it. It's really just that popper and the large lipless that I probably won't use all that much. Um, but the other stuff I'll probably get some good use out of. And I imagine catch some fish on. The mystery tackle box, like I said, nothing surprising or um, like just incredible about it. But in general, stuff that I'll probably use more frequently, right? So the jig, um, the terminal, the whatever else is in here that I'm blanking on at the moment. Uh, oh, the Sakoshi bugs, the um, the worms, that spy bait. I don't, I don't know if that I'll use it all that much, but I'll definitely use it to see what it's like, just to give it a try, uh, see how it does. But of the two boxes, like if you just laid out all the lures, I'll probably use more of the stuff out of the mystery tackle box than I will the lucky tackle box. Now I will say the lucky tackle box gets points for um, more unique lures. So those swim baits are definitely swim baits I've never seen before. Those creature baits I have seen before, but they were like, you know, they're a different style. They're not just your normal beaver creature bait. Um, so it's a little bit different style. Those blue hooks really intrigue me. I got to figure out like how I could actually use them since I can't clip them onto something. Um, if you guys know anything about those hooks or how you're supposed to use them or whatever, leave that down in the comments and I'll try to get that figured out, try to use those because they look like really good quality hooks. I just don't know how to tie my line to them because uh, there's no eyelet to tie the line to. So leave a comment if you know how to use that. Um, so yeah, more unique lures in the Lucky Tackle Box, probably more usable lures just on a, you know, every fishing trip kind of basis or every day kind of <clears throat> basis in the Mystery Tackle Box. I will say this, the value I think is better in the Mystery Tackle Box. Um, it's $19.99 or like I got a yearly subscription for like 200 bucks or maybe not even that much, like 180 or 200 for a yearly subscription. Uh, versus $25 after tax and, and all it was like 26 or $27 for the Lucky Tackle Box. Um, so I think the value is better for the Mystery Tackle Box between these two. Um, just by like, okay, dollar amount plus I will use the lures more, right? Not necessarily because the lures were more expensive and cost less for the box, if that makes sense. So it's not, I, I'm not adding up the price of the lures individually and going, okay, but then the boss, the box costs this much, so it's a better value. I'm just going on value based on the box costs this much, I will use it this much, right? So the mystery tackle box takes it there. Um, so consistency and value, I think mystery tackle box, I think uniqueness, Lucky Tackle Box, because I've got some lures in there that I've never heard of, um, lures that are unique, um, that I, I might just be different enough to catch some fish. I don't know. Um, we'll have to find out. But some unique lures that I'll definitely use and can utilize um, on, you know, lures I throw all the time. Um, I, I also give the Mystery Tackle Box, Mystery Tackle Box, an edge in... Um, the extras because of course you get the dibble there's the card usually with a QR code to some posts and uh, blogs and videos from shop Carl's that go along with a lot of these lures uh, and then you always get a sticker with it the lucky tackle box just had the lures in it <clears throat> it had a nice wrapping job in it but uh, no extras no card um, no sticker um, none of that so for just like the extras and intangibles, I guess is what I would call it. Uh, Mystery Tackle Box would get that one as well. So consistency, value, and intangibles, 
uh, I'd give to Mystery Tackle Box. Um, uniqueness and just for like um, just the the newness and like uh, originality I guess is probably the best way to, to say that I would say lucky tackle box um, even though you know, I, overall I would say in in this comparison um, I'd say the mystery tackle box wins now I understand that this is kind of a flawed system in that I'm just taking my monthly mystery tackle box and comparing it to a single box that I bought from these websites. So you have to understand it's probably not a one-to-one -one comparison because I don't have a subscription to all of these services. I just have mystery tackle box and I'm buying singles of the others to compare. Um, so it may not be a one-for-one -one, uh, comparison, but in general, these are bass fishing boxes. They're roughly the same price point and they're supposed to be, you know, selected from the same general pool of lures or lure types. And so I think that in, in that regard, it's at least okay to compare the two side by side and say which one is objectively uh, better or better for the value or um, better for the angler. And in, in this one, I would go with Mystery Tackle Box. So. Let me know down in the comments what you guys thought of these boxes, um, which lures you think are, are better or worse, or which ones you just think are just off the wall or crazy. Um, let me know how I should fish some of those unique lures in the mystery tackle box, maybe that large lipless crankbait or that crazy popper, um, certainly those hooks. Let me know down in the comments how you guys might use those or if you've used them before and if you've had success, how you've done it. And uh, next month, I will tackle another uh, mystery box compared to my mystery tackle box then. So like I said, I'm doing it in that format in that way because I think the mystery tackle box is the standard for mystery boxes. It may not have been the first, but I, I just think it's the industry standard. And, and so I'm going to compare these other boxes to my monthly box in these battle of the boxes. So this month, mystery tackle box wins. But... We'll see you next month to see who takes the crown then. Peace.